welcome to Debut Live. I'm Preeti from EY and I'm the Student Recruitment Advisor for the Southwest Region. So what that really means is going out to local schools, sixth forms, colleges, universities um, to really let students know about what EY does, um, what our programs are and to really drive applications. And today I'm joined by Emma and Annabelle. So they are our current apprentice and graduate. So hi, I'm Emma. I'm a school leaver apprentice in indirect tax for the FS sector. So I work with like banks, insurers and wealth and asset managers. Um, yeah, I'm, I joined straight after my A-levels and I'm going two years strong so far. Hi, I'm Annabelle and I'm in my second year of the graduate program. So I joined straight after uni. Uh, I'm in assurance, so audit, and I'm in the UK and I TMT division, which is technology, media and telecommunications. Great. So this week we are celebrating National Apprenticeship Week. Um, so I suppose today's session is really about helping students decide, you know, whether an apprenticeship is right for you or whether a graduate program is right for you. Now it seems to be a hot topic at the moment as to the pros and cons about apprenticeships. And apprenticeships really have been on the increase at the moment, especially over the past recent years. Um, and I suppose it's presenting another option um, to carve your own career path. Um, and that's where the challenge is in terms of finding out what, what is it about apprenticeships that might be right for you. Um, the reason why apprenticeships are probably on the increase at the moment, which um, a lot of students, parents, teachers tend to think well, what's happening. Um, and that's really due to the apprenticeship levy. So it's the apprenticeship levy is really encouraging businesses um, to increase their apprenticeship numbers um, and really thinking about future proofing. So as well as graduate graduates being on the graduate program and having all these amazing new skills, um, it's also future proofing for um, apprentices to also have and learn um, key skills as well. So today, again, we're talking about, you know, what is right for you, but also more importantly, actually, is talking to you guys. So you can actually talk about your experiences um, and how it differs and looking at the pros and cons um, and hopefully clearing a lot of misconceptions as well. Um, but I think the key thing to really think about at this stage is there's no wrong or right um, option. It's literally down to what is right for you. So over to you guys. Um, so if you could just tell us a little bit about your experiences. Yes, yeah, so like I said, I'm on the School Leave program. So I'm just under two years into it now. The program is four and a half years long overall. So I think I should be qualified by something like 22. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I work in tax, but more, more closely indirect tax. So in tax, there's the indirect tax, the direct tax, and we do compliance and advisory work. But all of this boils down to helping businesses pay the correct tax and help them with their tax strategies, which is particularly important when we've got like loads of cross-border companies and stuff all over the world. So the majority of my time is spent in the office, although I do go to client meetings, but I'm not on client site. I tend to be in the office like nine times out of ten. Um, I go to college in chunks, so it's not what most people think where it's like a one day at college, four days in the office. It's most of the time in the office. When you've got an exam coming up, you'll go to college for like, I don't know, a week to up to like about a month at a time. And yes, yeah, so it's quite separate. My first year, I was probably in the office more as I had fewer exams. But in my second year, I've been more at college and studying. But in my second year, I've also had more responsibility with clients and talking directly with clients and managing projects projects. So when you've got more exams and more responsibility, it's quite difficult to balance. But you kind of just get used to it and get in the gist of it and just make sure that you have time. I think it's really important to plan everything. So my typical working day, well, there isn't really one. It just differs depending on what project I'm on, if it's just a bit of advice that I'm doing. But this morning I was working on a project for a client where We've engaged with EY offices in 30 other countries, so I'm having conversations with like Ireland, Greece, Luxembourg. Um, yeah, keeps you on your toes. Uh, the end goal in sight for all of this is a level seven apprenticeship. So it, that's the equivalent to a master's degree under the government accredited apprenticeship. And in addition to that, my college time goes towards the ACA qualification. So I'm hoping to become a chartered accountant. 
Um, so, as I said before, I came straight from uni and my graduate programme is three years in length. Uh, I'm in assurance, which is um, audit, so I'm helping businesses to publish their reliable financial accounts. Um, my, my majority of the time is spent on the client side, so I work very directly with the clients themselves. Um, having discussions with them and everything like that. So it's quite nice because I spend a lot of my time with the team that I'm working with. So you get to know your team really well um, and you work with other grads very closely as well. So that's really nice because um, you get to meet other people who are your age as well. Um, also, as I said before, I'm in the TMT division. So I'm working with technology firms. Uh, which is really interesting now with the, the whole way the world's going, more and more technology. So it's really interesting to know how their businesses work and everything um, like that. So um, in my first year, unlike Emma, the majority of my time was spent at college and self-study. So I did 12 out of the 15 exams in my first year, <laughs> which I know sounds really daunting, um, but it gives you a really good grounding for your second year at work. Um, and it's a great feeling now knowing I've only got three exams left. Um, and also, I think the way you, as again, like Emma, it's in blocks that you're at college. So you don't really have to balance your college and uh, work that much because, for example, I was out of work for six whole weeks at a time. So I wasn't thinking about any work. I didn't have any work on in the background. So it's not so much, it's not too difficult to balance it. Um, and then in my second year now, most of my time spent at client sites, so I'm getting really stuck into work. And uh, like I said, I think the all the twelve exams I've I've done so far have really helped me understand the businesses, and um, I guess enjoy work a bit more <laughs> and now that I understand what I'm doing. Um, and um, so, there, like Emma, there's no typical day for me. Um, it depends what client I'm on. So I have four key clients. Um, throughout the year, ranging from a large FTSE 20 company to quite a small tech company. So it's really interesting to know how their businesses differ um, and everything like that. Um, and my end goal as well is I'll also get the level seven um, apprenticeship equivalent to the master's. But the key for me is the ACA qualification. And as I'm in audit, I'm also doing the audit qualification. So. Hopefully, I'll be able to sign the audits if I make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much, girls. So, I'm thinking about let's touch on the more common questions. So, I think the main question that a lot of students actually do tend to come up to me and ask are, um, what made you actually choose to do an apprenticeship or a graduate programme? Um, so I think, although there's some people that obviously have like no idea, for me it was quite clear cut. I never saw myself going to university, although I made sure that I went to like the open days and did everything that you're meant to. Um, a lot of people kind of pushed me to university as well, because I think not many people were educated about apprenticeships. So it was mm -hmm. kind of just from A levels to uni. That's all a lot of people knew. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of having to do all the research and find out that. Actually, I could get to where I wanted to go. I wanted to work in financial services. I didn't need a degree for that. Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to almost fast track myself through the process, I guess, without the other years. Yeah. Um, and something like this is perfect. Like it's structured. You get everything that you need. But in terms of that's how I knew what to do with an apprenticeship. But I didn't really know what in financial services to apply to. Mm -hmm. So I went to like open days, saw an EY stand at the Skills London event in Exeter. Oh, okay. And just kind of got informed on everything, decided to apply to tax, and I guess giant kind of just fell into my role from that. Okay, cool. Um, so mine's kind of the opposite to Emma. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> I always thought I'd go to uni. Um, I just felt like it was the natural path that you would take. Um, so and as well at the same time, I didn't fully know that I wanted to go into accountancy and audit when I left school. So. Um, again, it was kind of the natural progression, and I thought going to uni would help me find myself, find exactly the career I wanted to take, um, which definitely was helped by the careers advice that you get at uni, um, all the university fairs and everything like that. Um, it really helps you know exactly what you want to do. Um, I also felt like uni is a time that is never like any other time in your life. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of don't have responsibilities as such. It's very much just left on your own, go and um, 
yeah, going sort of plenty of down. So <laughs> it's quite a different a different experience for life and I thought I didn't I didn't want to miss out on that to be honest. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I suppose another a very common um, question that comes up and it's it's around that misconception piece. So I suppose what are the misconceptions around apprenticeships and graduate programs? Because um, for instance, apprenticeships um, a lot of students tend to ask about the social life and they have their peers that go and take the traditional route and go to university and they're thinking if I do an apprenticeship I'm not going to have a social life, it's just work, work, work. Um, what is the misconception around that, Emma? I'll, I'll send that to you. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, like it's kind of wildly inaccurate, although you're not going to be passing okay, like good. every day of the week, but you like you have got responsibilities, you have got to show up to work on time, you've got to do your work. But mm -hmm. everyone's always up for like going out after work. Everyone kind of wants to like let their hair down a bit after work. And you get team social. So I think we have like a quarterly social that there's like budget for. Okay. So we all go like organize a big thing. And I think also because it's not every day that you're going out, you kind of make more of it when it is a social. Yeah. You kind of enjoy it a bit more. Um, but yeah, like the teams aren't, it's not like you're joining a corporate team of like, all these like 40 to 50 year olds there's an intake every year of like mm -hmm. grads school Good leavers point. it's quite a young team as well mm -hmm. so people do want to go out and enjoy themselves mm -hmm. and not all of your friends are going to go for apprenticeships you can just go and visit your friends at university and still almost live both sides of it but just in a smaller dose yeah good point actually um and in terms of the graduate program so it's not really a specific type of um, misconception question that I've had, but more in terms of the hesitation. So students have um, thought, well, if I go down the traditional route to university and I join a graduate program, um, am I going to be on some sort of back foot or disadvantage? Because apprenticeships just seems to be the new hot topic thing. Um, what's your take on that? Do you feel like you are at a disadvantage compared to an apprenticeship? No, I definitely don't think so because, um, as we explained before, the, the programme differs in length between the graduate programme and the apprenticeship one. So mine's three years, whereas Emma's was four and a half. So there is a bit of a difference. I know overall the education length is longer for me, mm -hmm. um, but I think the experiences you get at uni are, are different to the ones you get at work, and it kind of creates a good transition between yeah. school and work. So um, no, I don't think. I don't think that's an effect at all. Okay, that's um, that's good yeah. to hear actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I guess another another question that I had actually very recently um, this week in light of National Apprenticeship Week, um, a student had actually asked amongst all the positive stuff that we're talking about apprenticeships um, as well as graduate programs obviously, um, this student had actually asked outright to um, me along with I think four other employers to say look. Apprenticeships are being a bit too glorified now. Just be real. Yeah. What are the cons? Because we all know that there are pros and cons to absolutely everything in life. So, Emma, I suppose another question yeah. directed <laughs> to you. What would you say are the cons? We'll start with the cons because we've said a lot of pros yeah. already. So, I think definitely the most difficult thing is working alongside studying. Yeah. But like I said before, you're not going to have exams like every day of the year. Like mm -hmm. it will be in chunks, and in those times, maybe you do have to sacrifice your social life a little bit to think like actually I should put the effort in so that I can like reap the rewards in the future. Yeah. Um, and that's probably more difficult for your first couple of exams. It's like transitioning. I think the transition from A levels to work mm -hmm. wasn't too difficult. You knew what you're getting yourself into. It's like a nine to five. You yeah. know what's happening. But when the exams come around, it's kind of a bit more pressure. But you've got an awful lot of support there. You've got so many contacts that you can reach out to. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a con, not to say like there are no cons. Yeah. It, every experience will be different as well. Like you just have to kind of be smart about it and mm -hmm. like manage it and manage your time and balance it and be willing to take maybe a couple of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Okay. And going back to what's about social life, what would you say is the work like you guys at, you know, EY, I guess, whilst you're on programme? You want to take that one? <laughs> yeah. um, I think the work life balance is good. So, um, uh, as we've said before, so your exams are quite—they're quite separate from your work. You don't 
don't balance too much. Mm -hmm. um, the social life is really good. So as we've also said, there's team socials a lot and you work with a lot of your peers. So it's good and you, there's so many people who join with you. you you're all in the same boat even when you're going through a tricky time with the, with long hours and everything. Um, because in, in audit, there's three months of the year which are quite intense for them, January to March, which is busy season. Um, but then you don't have exams around that time, so you're not, but you don't have to focus on exams at the same time. Um, and I think, as well as at EY, there's so many different things to get involved in, which help with the work life balance. So uh, I'm on the social committee for my division, so I'm helping to organise. We have four main socials every year. Um, and then it's really interesting, so we do a big Christmas dinner, um, which is great. We leave at 2 p.m. and go for dinner, oh, and nice. it's, it's a great day. Um, and it's really in the summer, so you get to know everyone in your division really well because mm. of the social life is um, is a good part. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and you've obviously been on the side that a lot of students are in at the moment, which is deciding. You know, do I do an apprenticeship? Do I do a graduate program? What what kind of advice or what considerations would you have to kind of tell a student um, what I suppose what you wish you had known, or if there's anything that you wish you had known, or is there something that you would have specifically liked to have um, find out differently before before joining a program? What will make it easier for students to kind of understand what path to take? I think the main thing is just do an awful lot of research. Like, it might be a bit like repetitive and stuff, yeah. but because if you get into a role and you, ha you like aren't informed about it, then you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. So I think you need to just look at it, and even if like we've been talking about pros and cons, even if you do draw up like a pros and cons list, mm -hmm. and just and don't be influenced by what your friends are doing. I think. Yes. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, if you don't know what you want to do when you're at, when you're at school still, I think uni is a good option to take because you can then have your three four years, however long you spend at uni, to decide what you want to do, um, and take a slightly slower decision making process. Um, but of course, there's the debt factor which comes <laughs> into uni. So uh, if you don't want to have debt, then I think the apprenticeship's a really good option to take. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah. No, that, that yeah, exactly, so. yeah. Um, so thank you so much. So I suppose over to you guys. Um, we can start off with some questions that you might have. Um, so we have one from Essie. Um, so what's the difference between internships and placements? So bit of a general question, um, just because there's so many finer details in between. So um, internships can be one year long, so industrial placements that you have um, within a four-year degree um, at university, and then you take that third year, so penultimate year, um, to work at um, a corporate company, um, just to have that work experience. But then a placement, um, it, it tends to be slightly shorter, so you can have it as a work experience um, for one week, for instance. Um, but I suppose with with asking about the difference between internships and placements with those keywords in particular, I think very much look at you know EY's website um, and you know the company that you're interested in working for. Look at their website because I think companies use these words slightly differently, but that's how EY interprets that, I guess. Um, so thank you for your question, Essie. Um, another question is, so this is a good one from Jonathan. Um, would a graduate scheme or an apprenticeship give more opportunities when it comes to software engineering? So I'm saying that's a good question, not specifically, specifically for yeah. you guys, because I know you're not in tech, but just because I've had that question quite a few times, um, especially at a couple of careers fairs that I've been to this week. Um, if you do a graduate scheme or an apprenticeship, it really doesn't give you more or less opportunities. At the end of the day, whether you do an apprenticeship, graduate scheme, or even normal vacancy, like what I'm doing, um, you drive your own opportunities, if that makes sense. So you know, you need to put in the work regardless of where you're placed in that company. But software engineering in particular, again, it's, you know, it could be software engineering, it could be a tax specialist, for instance. 
um, you really do need to drive that. And I suppose it's a lot more positive now that apprenticeships are a lot more exposed, I guess. So a lot of businesses do know the value of apprenticeship a lot more now, um, as opposed to businesses thinking quite a few years ago now that graduate programs, they are the key ones, but they're not you know, it's not the only key player now. So it, it really depends on you driving your own opportunities, to be honest. I also think just Oh yeah, to go that, for it. <laughs> um, so when you join UI, you get given a buddy in your, in the year yeah. house. And my buddy who joined in September, he actually joined on the digital apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a degree actually, he went to uni, but he wasn't sure what he wanted to do after. And he was, he was interested in tech, but also the accountancy side. So. He joined as a digital apprentice. Um, so he's working in assurance as well at the moment. But a lot of his time is um, out in college studying. Um, I don't know the exact degree he's doing, but he's doing a tech degree okay. alongside his time in audit. Um, so he's going to get. He's going to be eventually, I think, pushed more into the digital side of okay. UI. So I, I think that's an option to look into if mm -hmm. that's the route you want to go down, more kind of the digital and tech aspect of yeah. Okay. I think as well, also, I don't know how many people know about it, because I definitely don't know, the EYX office in Shoreditch, which focuses yeah. entirely on tech, mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. probably a good thing to research. Yeah, that's a good one. Because I know a lot of people outside of the EY probably don't actually hear about it that much. Yeah, no, definitely, that's yeah. a good point. Um, I suppose looking at EY, um, I'll throw this out to both of you actually. Emma, we'll start with you. What makes EY unique for you, I guess? Why why did you choose EY? Um, well, I guess, so there's obviously EY and then there's within the big four as well. So the big four, a lot of the work you do is similar, the clients you have is similar, yeah. it's similar size, it's, everything is similar. Mm -hmm. But I think going to, like I said, I went to like the careers event at Skills London. When I was talking to like the EY people, it's just a lot more people's based. And yeah. for like the apprenticeship as well, the fact that you didn't actually need to get a specific grade. Mm -hmm. It's more like about your people qualities, about if they think you're going to be like good to learn. Mm -hmm. And it's just quite cohesive. I think it's not like you're going to be judged necessarily for like okay. stuff that you do. So I think it's just easier to fit in. Okay, that, actually, yeah. yeah, that's really reassuring actually, <laughs> even for me. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. I think um, from because I went to all the university fairs and everything, and all the big four were there, and I, EY stood out me as a as a people's yeah. firm oh, as okay. opposed to I don't know if cutthroat is the right word but I felt like <laughs> speaking to the other yeah. big four it was mm -hmm. a bit more sort of stern and like not not so approachable people yeah. I'd say yeah um, and that was a big part of okay of EY. Um, yeah I think yeah. I actually agree with you girls even though I'm not on program but yeah. coming through a direct entry route as a normal vacancy definitely agree um I couldn't have put it in a different way either. <laughs> just the other <laughs> other companies just tend to be a bit more cutthroat, but yeah, it's definitely yeah. people um, based here. So uh, thank you very much for that question. Another question is um, from Sven. So what is the progression like in each of your roles? Um, so in terms of like responsibilities, you've already seen, I guess it's because the program's quite structured, it's probably more year on year that you can see the progression. Okay. Because with the first year, obviously you are the first year, you're the one with the least responsibility. Mm -hmm. As soon as the year below you comes in, you then have to like be the one delegating to them as well. That oh, as soon okay. as you're not the bottom level, yeah, it's uh, like a lot of progression, even in the fact that you have to kind of digest the information and then delegate it on to someone else. So that is like an immediate progression. And the responsibilities, like you get more client responsibility. Mm -hmm. I don't know about audit because obviously you're on client site, mm -hmm. but not being on client site, I think it would be quite easy for you to like fall into the background of doing the work and not talking to the clients. Okay. But as you go through, you can see that like they want to put you in front of clients. You get a lot of interaction, right. and you can just see by looking at people that are on the intakes above me, they've clearly progressed quicker. Mm -hmm. Your technical knowledge is progresses. You have like we have like team meetings where. It is just based on technical knowledge, okay. and it's meant solely for the more junior people. Mm -hmm. So every aspect of it progresses pretty quickly. It's at like an exponential rate. It's ridiculous. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> but it's not too much to handle. It's just yeah. a natural progression. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. What about you, Annabelle? Yeah, definitely. I think as soon as a first year comes onto your team, mm -hmm. you're then you can coach them 
um, which is really good because what's interesting then is that you really need to understand yeah. like why you're doing something so you can explain to the first year mm. okay can you do this and this is why you're doing it yeah. um, which then also helps with your own um, understanding of stuff definitely um, so yeah I think first year is quite a learning curve and people people on your teams understand that you don't know an awful lot how to do your job exactly because it is right. so different and you can't really sort of um, prepare too much for yeah. it because it's all about um, like our systems and everything for instance like how do you know how to yeah. use your system if you haven't mm -hmm. seen it in why and stuff like that so um, I think as I said it's like super fast progress yeah. but um, not too fast that you can't okay, yeah, catch yeah. <laughs> and I suppose based on what you guys have said with um, another intake coming after you guys it must be quite nice to mentor in a way mm -hmm. Because you've yeah. been there, done that, as yeah. you know, you're kind yeah. of what you're doing now. You've been there um, in student shoes where you're confused and mm. not knowing what to really do, yeah. and now you're on the other side, so you're yeah. able to better advise. Yeah. Um, which I think, yeah, is key yeah. actually, yeah. and it, it makes it a better culture as well for when yeah. new starters actually join. Mm. Um, thank you for that question. So I think we have only time for one last question, so we'll take. Um, can you so this is a question from pablo so can you tell us a little bit more about the training you get on the job so under the level seven qualification you have to do a certain amount of on the job off the job training i guess but okay. you're in the office but you're still like training right. so like i said we have like weekly meetings where you do training you can um i've put in like you get assigned a counselor where i've put in a weekly training session like off the back that's like one to one because I know that that's how I learn better okay it's kind of like you steer it yourself there are classroom trainings that you have to do but aside from that you can just kind of be flexible and do what you want to do yourself yeah. so it's really down to you to kind of lead it I think so I guess going back to one of the previous questions it's it's driving your own training your own to career. some extent <laughs> yeah driving your yeah. own career exactly yeah I think um as well as everything Emma said there's or the, that we've got a um, link with a program where you can do your own sort of training on the side, which is can be completely different. So yeah. there's like coding trainings and stuff like that. If you want to get more into that side, so um, yeah, I think there's there's so much you can do at EY, yeah. and just I feel like you can constantly keep learning. Yeah, um, yeah. And the support is there as well. Yeah. So when you join, yeah. you get given a counselor who's um, a manager level. Um, and you also get given a buddy who's in the year above you and you can reach out to them whenever you want. Yeah. You have quarterly um, or even more frequently meetings with your counsellor yeah. about how it's all going, how your exams are going, do you need help? Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when you say counsellor, just for layman's <laughs> terms, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, because there are problems happening. Yeah, but um, yeah. They're just called counsellors, but it's kind of like a, like a mentor. Like yeah. If yeah. you've got, if you're stressed or anything like yeah. that, go to you. The, yeah. They're just a manager, yeah. um, and yeah. anything you need help with. So if you want to do some comments to other countries once you qualify, you go to your counsellor, and they'll help you set up yeah. everything. Okay, so like a development manager yeah. to kind of help you with your goals, I guess. Yeah. At EY, but kind of EY, everything and everything. Yeah. Like yeah. even if you're running late to a meeting, you just like. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So EY kind of have their own um, slang, I guess, for <laughs> counsellor as being development manager. Yeah. So but I think. Uh, Sorry, I'm no, no, carry on. <laughs> um, it's not just your counsellor. So I've got a meeting with a partner next week about a team that I'd like to get onto because I think it'll be good for development. Mm. So even though I'm only a second year in terms of the progression, a partner's still spending half an hour with me next week oh, talking okay. about how I want to develop my next client and everything. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there. Yeah, so. that's really good to know, um, yeah. actually. So. Um, yeah, thank you so much, girls, for actually talking about your experiences. It seems as though um, there's some overlap, as long you know, as well as obviously some yeah. differences. Um, but it seems as though it's very apparent that you guys have actually done the program that is right for you. Um, it yeah. seems as though you are actually enjoying the program that you're doing. Um, so I suppose that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Just you know, apprenticeship. Yes, it's being glorified to some extent, but it's it's literally just another option for you um, to choose from, um, other than just 
one other option that we we have had for many years now which is the traditional route but there's nothing wrong with that route at all um so i guess hopefully you know your experiences here have actually helped with with your decision making i guess so whatever you pick it's no right or wrong answer and i suppose good luck with that decision um and yeah thank you so much for watching okay bye